The complement system is basically part of our immune system and what the complement system aims to do is it basically aims to protect our healthy cells of our body from different types of pathogens and different types of toxic substances that can get into our body and infect and cause damage to those healthy cells. Now, generally speaking, the complement system can be broken down into two pathways, into two major mechanisms. We have the classical pathway that we're going to focus on in this lecture, and we have another pathway known as the alternative pathway, which we're going to focus on in the next lecture. So what exactly is the classical pathway? Well, let's recall the relationship between antibodies and antigens. So remember, antigens are those pathogenic molecules, usually pathogenic proteins that come from foreign pathogenic cells and which eventually end up in the bloodstream or the tissues of our body. While antibodies are those protein molecules that are produced by the immune cells of our body, which eventually are complementary and bind to those antigens. And once the antibody binds onto the antigen, it forms the antibody antigen complex. Now, what exactly happens following the formation of the antibody antigen complex. So usually, once the antibody antigen complex is formed, that's when we activate the classical pathway of the complement system. So what triggers the classical pathway is the formation of the antibody antigen complex. So what exactly happens once we form that antibody antigen complex to initiate the classical pathway? way. Well, as it turns out, the complement system actually consists of over 30 inactivated proteins that are found circulating in the bloodstream of our body. And these proteins are only activated when we actually form the antibody antigen complex. So the antigen antibody or the antibody antigen complex goes on and, and um, activates all these inactivated proteins found in our bloodstream as we'll see in just a moment and then those activated proteins go on and create a cascade of events many different processes that eventually label those antigens for destruction and kill off those pathogenic agents that created those antigens in the first place so to see exactly what we mean by that let's discuss some of these proteins that are part of the classical pathway that are part of the complement system. And let's begin with the first protein known as complement 1 or simply C1. Now C1 is actually a protein complex that consists of three different protein subunits. We have C1Q, we have C1S, and C1R. And to be more specific, we have six molecules of C1Q here shown in blue. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six C1Q molecules. We have two molecules of C1S, so one, two, and then we have two molecules of C1R shown in red, one and two all the way in the back here. And this entire complex is the C1 uh, protein that is part of the classical pathway. Now, this is in its inactive form, but to be activated, what must happen is the constant region of the antibody that is bound to its complementary antigen has to bind onto this C1Q complex of C1. So basically, to be more specific, we have five different types of antibodies in our body. We have five different types of immunoglobulins. And two of these immunoglobulins that are capable of binding to this C1 complex are immunoglobulin M and immunoglobulin G. So let's suppose immunoglobulin M, this antibody, finds its complement antigen, it binds to it, and then that complex goes on and binds onto the C1Q portion of the C1 protein, and then that activates C1R, and then that activates C1S. 
Now, C1X is actually, uh, C1S is actually a serine protease, and what that means is it can go on and activate other proteins that are part of the classical pathway by cleaving them at specific amino acid sequences. So, to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So, this is the entire C1 complex. When the C1 complex binds onto the antibody antigen complex, Complex, it basically is activated and then the C1S portion, these two proteins here, basically go on and they cleave the C2 and the C4 proteins, also part of the classical pathway. And so we cleave the C2 into C2A and C2B and we cleave the C4 into C4A and C4B. Now, C2A and C4A basically uh, diffuse away, they swim away, while C2B and C4B create a non-covalent bond and they form a complex known as C4B-C2B complex. And what this complex does is it goes on to activate two other proteins as we'll see in just a moment. One of the proteins is known as C3 and that's exactly why sometimes the C4B-C2B complex is known as the C3 convertase. And the other protein that this can activate is the C5 as we'll see in just a moment. So let's begin with the C3. So here we have the inactive form of C3 that is moving around circulate in the blood, uh, circulating in the bloodstream and eventually once we form this, this complex activates this by cleaving it into C3B and C3A. So what exactly is the function of C3A? Well, C3A is a molecule known as an anaphylatoxin. And what an anaphylatoxin does is it goes on and binds onto the membrane of either mast cells or onto basophils and it basically stimulates those two types of cells to release a chemical, immune chemical, known as histamine. So recall that histamine dilates the blood vessels leading to that infection and it also makes the capillaries much more permeable to fluid. Uh, to fluid. And what that means is the blood flow will increase to that infected area and so the immune cells and immune chemicals will be able to get to that infected area much more quickly. So C3A basically increases the rate at which we can protect our body from these different types of pathogenic infections. Now, what about C3B? Well, C3B has two different functions. One of its function is to act as a molecule known as opsonin. Now, what opsonin does is it carries out a process known as opsonization, and that basically means it stimulates phagocytic cells of our immune system, it calls upon these phagocytic cells. So C3B goes on and binds onto a special glycoprotein found on the membrane of that particular pathogenic cell. And once bound, it acts in a process known as opsonization, meaning it calls upon these phagocytic cells for example, macrophages or neutrophils, and then these phagocytic cells come nearby and basically phagocytize, they engulf these pathogenic agents. Now, the other function of C3B is to basically go on and bind onto an allosteric site found on the C5 protein. And by binding to the C5 protein, it basically creates a conformational change and it prepares it for cleavage by the C4B-C2B complex. Remember, this complex doesn't only activate C3, it also activates C5. So we have this very complex mechanism where many different proteins activate other proteins and that's why we call this a cascade of events. In fact, the complement system is also sometimes known as the, compl uh, the complement cascade system because we have so many events taking place and so many proteins are being activated. 
So let's see exactly how the C5 is activated. Basically, the C3B binds onto the allosteric side in C5, creating a conformational change in its structure. And then the C4B C2B complex goes on and cleaves the C5 to form the C5A and C5B. Now, C5A doesn't only act as an anaphylatoxin and stimulates the release of histamine, but the C5A also acts in a process known as chemotaxis and what chemotaxis means is the stimulation of other cells it calls upon other cells such as for example neutrophils so chemotaxis is the process by which cells use chemicals to basically communicate with one another and call upon one another so c5a basically acts in this process of chemotaxis now what what C5B does, the other component of the cleavage of C5 is, is it basically acts as the foundation to produce a special complex known as the membrane attack complex. So C5B acts as an anchor to basically stimulate the formation of this complex. So we call upon C6, C7, C8, we form the complex and this complex goes on to a cell membrane of that pathogenic cell and it stimulates the formation of a channel inside that membrane that basically lyses that cell. So what happens is this complex forms or stimulates another complex that is composed of C9 molecules. So we have as many as uh, 18 C9 molecules basically arrange themselves and form a water channel inside that cell membrane. And once we form the water channel with the guidance of this complex, this protein complex, uh, water basically moves via osmosis down its, uh, down its concentration gradient and the water molecules move into the cell that blows up the cell, eventually the cell lyses. And so what the membrane attack complex consists of is this entire complex that guides the formation of this type of channel that eventually lyses and destroys that pathogenic cell. That's what we mean by the membrane attack complex. So this is basically the classical pathway and to initiate that classical pathway, part of the complement system, we need the antibody to actually bind onto that antibody antigen to form the antibody antigen complex so that we activate this C1 and then the C1 goes on to activate C2 and C4 to form this complex and this complex can either go on to activate C3 or go on to activate C5 which activates the membrane attack complex. So we have different types of mechanisms that are in play in the classical pathway. So for one thing, we have the cell lysis process that kills off those pathogenic cells and the cells that carry those antibodies that are bound to the antigens. We have the process of chemotaxa taking place. So we said that the C5 protein, C5A protein, for example, is a chemical that can communicate with other immune cells and call upon other immune cells. We have the process of opsonization, which basically is the process by which we stimulate the process of phagocytosis. We call upon these phagocytic cells, such as macrophages and neutrophils, and we also have the process of agglutination taking place. And what agglutination means is it's when many of these antibody antigen complexes get together and they basically inhibit that pathogenic agent from acting and infecting our cells. And so eventually that conglomerate of, anti, uh, of antibody antigen complexes is engulfed by pathogenic, uh, by our phagocytic cells. And finally, we also have the promotion uh, of formation of antibodies. So I didn't discuss this, but also what happens is once the C3B ceases to exist, ceases to um, 
function, the C3B is basically degraded and some of the fragments that are produced when we degrade C3B go on to basically activate cells such as dendritic cells which then go on to activate uh, plasma cells to basically produce antibodies. And all these processes are in play in the classical pathway, which is a pathway of the complement system. So in the next lecture, we're going to focus on the alternative pathway of the complement system.